Want to research stocks and join a community of traders that are researching stocks and looking at stocks every single day? Then join richtv.io. Hi, how's everybody doing today? I'm your host, Rich, here on behalf of Rich TV Live with our very special guest, the CEO of Latin Metals, Keith Henderson. How are you doing today, Keith? I'm good, thank you. Yeah, uh, nice to be here. Always a pleasure. Very excited to have you on the show. Keith, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and what made you want to become the CEO of Latin Metals? Uh, okay, yeah, I'm, I'm originally from Northern Ireland. I've, uh, I moved across to Vancouver probably about 15 years ago. Uh, I'm a geologist by training. I've been in, uh, a little over 25 years in experience in exploration geology. And really, I've got I've got truly global experience and experience across a whole range of commodities uh, with a with a bit of a focus on Latin Latin America, which is where Latin Metals focuses. Uh, as CEO of Latin Metals, I'm actually the founder of Latin Metals. <laughs> we, we brought together a, a core group of investors who really like this kind of prospect generator model that we're working with. And we kind of knew that we knew that it would be hard work and it would take two or three years to to build the story, uh, a building phase, if you like. But we also knew that we could bring an investor-focused company to the market. And an investor-focused company is a little bit of a special thing. Uh, there's a lot of companies in Vancouver, and they're not all looking after investors. A lot of them are looking after the people that work there, the management. That's absolutely not the case with us. We're trying to build a story which will limit dilution, that will maintain value and create value for shareholders. That's fantastic. And Keith, a few days ago, you guys announced that Latin Metals entered into a definitive option agreement with Anglo Gold in yeah. regards to gold exploration projects. Can you tell the audience what that means for the company and how it will impact shareholders? Uh, well, for the company, it's a big success. It's exactly what we're trying to do. Uh, you know, the prospect generator model, we have lots of projects. We try and farm those out to various companies. And, and where possible, we try to farm them out to a, a big major company like Anglo Gold, fourth biggest gold producer in the world. Fabulous technical team, uh, lots of financial capability to fund the work that they want to do. And that's all very, very good for us. They're looking at our projects in northern Argentina. Uh, they believe that there's potential for a very large scale discovery there. And, and what it brings to us as a company is basically, well, they get a chance to earn 75% interest in the, in the project. To do that, they have to pay us 2.75 million US dollars over five years. They also have to spend an absolute minimum of 10 million US dollars over that period of time invested into the project. At the end of that process, you know, they'll have a target. They'll be looking for a certain size of deposit. If they see what they like or they think they can get to what they need, they can then take a decision to acquire an additional 5% of the project. And that basically involves them giving us another cash payment. So they would take the number of ounces that they've discovered. Let's just call it a million ounces for ease of mathematics. And, and then they pay us approximately $5 per ounce for that. So we get another cash payment coming in. So over the course of five or six years, we hope that from Anglo Gold, we'll see investment of the order of $20 million or a little more. And, uh, and that's very, very good for the company. For shareholders, uh, it should give shareholders hopefully exactly what they want. Everyone invests. Uh, everyone wants the, the opportunity to be involved in a large discovery. And that's exactly what Anglo Gold are trying to do. And if they're successful, that should make a very material difference to the company and the company's valuation, which would be very, very good for shareholders, I think. Now, with so many different exploration companies out there, what would you tell potential investors watching today that makes you stand out compared to the rest of the companies in the space? Oh, well, I hope we stand out. I hope we're very serious about what we're doing and, I, and we've got a very disciplined approach to our business model. Uh, we have lots and lots of properties, more than the typical exploration company. And what that means is that there's more opportunities for success, ultimately. Uh, we aim to farm out the properties to companies and we have the companies that we farm it out to spend all of the money. So we retain a minority interest, but we also severely limit the dilution to shareholders. So you have to trade off those two things against each other. Uh, you, know, you know that you're not going to get diluted as a shareholder, at least not excessively. Uh, and you also know you're going to have a minority interest in a whole range of projects. And if one of those projects is a very big success, then the company will be a success as well. Uh, from our perspective, you know, we have an excellent technical team. 
we're acquiring very high quality projects. And that is evidenced by the fact that we're getting deals with major companies. Uh, in the last two months, we've signed definitive option agreements with Barrick Gold and with Anglo Gold. And if you want to look around Vancouver, you won't see too many companies that have achieved that in such a short period of time. That speaks to our very high quality projects. Our management and board together own 49% of the company. So our interests are very closely aligned with those of shareholders. And as CEO, I've got 4.6% of the company. Now that's that's common in Vancouver. You'll see a lot of companies where the CEO has got a, a, a significant position, but you'll also often see that the CEO has purchased those shares at one cent or five cents, but they want the shareholders to buy those shares at 20 cents. Well, it's not the case here. You know, we've my average price for the shares that I purchased myself has been 18 cents. And and I'm buying the same shares that uh, other shareholders are buying as well. And I think that that's pretty positive for everybody. Uh, you know, limitation of dilution is really the core objective here. Uh, most of the money is spent by our partners. For every $1 that we spend, we see $5 ex uh, spent by partners. That's our prediction for this year. And we've got a very, very low burn rate. So various aspects and lots of things that I think make us stand out from, from lots of other companies and, and even from other prospect generators. Keith, can you tell us about the IP survey results the company just announced at the Laksha project in Peru? Yeah, this, this is a great project for us. It's, it's what every prospect generator wants to find. It's, it's something that we acquired by staking, which is a very cheap process. You acquire the property for almost nothing, really. Uh, we've done a few layers of exploration, uh, which is the business that we do. We do the early stage, relatively inexpensive surface exploration. And IP was really the last step in that process. IP is a little bit more expensive. It takes a couple of months to do, but it really works well. And it's with all of these layers of data, we've been able to establish uh, what we think are very good drill targets. We've got four different areas for drill targets. We've signed a three-year deal with the community, which allows us to get through the drill permitting process. And we've also recently had the, the go-ahead from the government to, uh, to go forward with that, that drill permitting process. So we think, we think we'll have a drill permit by around the end of August or early September. And it's a very critical step that will really, really help us to get a partner on this one as well. So, so we've gone over the course of a year and a half from, from staking the property to being very successful on the ground to defining drill targets, hopefully getting a drill permit and hopefully finding a partner. And, and it's exactly what we set out to do. And it's been a very big success. Congratulations on your success. Now, these have been really tough market conditions and it's been difficult to get liquidity into the stock. <laughs> Yeah. What is the company doing to attract more retail and institutional investors? Look, nobody ever, nobody ever invested in the company they never heard of. So that's the first step. Uh, as I mentioned, this was a, a kind of a two or three year building process for us. We had the idea, we put the company together, we invested and, and here we are. We're at the end of the process of a long, hard building process and we're ready to go. We've really literally just started marketing. We've, We've been marketing for two months, uh, doing things just like this, uh, trying to get our name out, trying to get the story out so that people that are interested can, can really take a look at it. We're also doing a lot of very targeted marketing towards high net worths and, and institutions as well. So we're just trying to go from, from nothing, from being completely unheard of to, to being a very well-known company. Uh, you know, this is, this is a particularly crappy market, let's say. Uh, you know, investors have got a choice every day. They can either panic and sell everything. And, and a lot of people take that choice and that's fine. Or you can go and look for like severely undervalued, high potential, well-managed companies that are, are strictly investor focused. And, and I hope that when people take a look at the company, they'll start to see some of those attributes in Latin metals. Now we're almost half of the year uh, done and through the first two quarters are almost complete. What yeah. is the company doing for the next two quarters to really spark investors' interest? Yeah, look, the, the first two quarters were great. We were able to announce a couple of good deals and, and a lot of good exploration results as well. Like going through the next couple of quarters, we'll be starting to get data back from Barrick Gold and from Anglo Gold from the work that they're doing on our projects in Argentina. Uh, we hopefully will get drill permits from Esperanza. That's a copper project that we optioned out to Libero Copper and Gold. And Libero are working on the drill permit. And hopefully quarter four that comes in and that gets started as well. Uh, we're looking for partners for Laksha and Oquis, two of our projects in Peru. And, and as I mentioned, we hope to have the drill permit at, at Laksha in Q3. 
And then just basically, it's an ongoing development of the project pipeline. As, as these projects get optioned out to major companies, we need to have other projects coming in at the other side. So it's constantly developing the pipeline and constantly growing the base of, of exploration projects. More exploration projects, more chance of success. It's as simple as that. If there was one thing you would want shareholders to know about Latin metals today before we say goodbye, what would it be? Uh, I think some investors are, are aware of the, of the prospect generator model, uh, some not so much. Uh, it's been an area where there's been a lot of research over the last couple of years, and it shows that the, the business model works really as intended. Statistically, a company working with this model is more likely to be involved in discovery of a very large deposit. And that can be statistically proven. Uh, more projects and a lot of partner money spent on the exploration makes sense if you think about it. So simply put, it's just demonstrably more chance of success in a very high risk and very high reward investment opportunity and investment category. And, and I don't know what more you can ask for. If you, if you want to get a big return from the exploration industry, you should invest in a company that's got more chance of success. Keith, we're going to have investors from all over the world that are going to see this interview. They're going to learn about your company. What is the best way for them to get in contact with you if they have any questions? Uh, ultimately, I'm available to anyone that wants to speak about the company or the investment. Uh, we usually do that through, uh, we've got a little uh, form that we fill in on the website. If anyone wants a call with management, they can fill in their details. They'll get directed through to Alicia Patterson, who's a key part of our management team. She looks after all of our marketing and investor relations, and she'll be able to connect people through to me uh, as necessary. So that's probably the easiest way to go. Uh, we can also maybe put her phone number and her email contacts uh, into this video when you post it. I'm sure she'd be happy with that and it would give people an easy way to get a hold of her. That's fantastic. Now, I must remind everyone that Rich TV Live is strictly for information and education purposes. Please do your due diligence, do your research before you invest in anything we talk about or discuss here on Rich TV Live. In saying that, I want to put your attention to Latin metals, the symbol in Canada, as you can see here, LMS, the symbol in America, LMSQF, Put on your radar, put on your watch list. If you're not winning, you're probably not watching. We bring in the winners and we bring them to you first. Thank you for joining us today. The founder and CEO of Latin Metals, Keith Henderson. Thank you for joining us today, Keith. Great. Thanks very much indeed. Take care. Always a pleasure. We wish you the best of luck. And for those of you guys that are watching, if you like the video, smash the like button, comment down below, share the video everywhere and subscribe. This is your host, Rich from Rich TV Live saying have a nice day, everybody. We'll see you soon.